If you ever thought about getting a successful mentor or coach and you actually want me, Spectacular Smith, to actually coach you and become your mentor, I'm actually so excited about releasing my online school, Spectacular Academy, where I'm actually going to teach you live once a month different skill sets that's actually going to help you change your life for the better transformational information that I'm going to give you guys access to. I have a formula to success that every single company that I ever touched turned into gold. And I have over 14 companies. Okay. And all of them have the same type of success. So I want to teach you everything that the school system should have taught you. You know, everything that I know and how I built these fast growing companies and these award winning companies and show you real curriculums that I'm going to break down. You're going to have access to me. I'm going to be live in the chat rooms. I'm going to be live in the Facebook groups and personal communities that I'm going to give you guys access to of like minded entrepreneurs. So you're not by yourself on this mission. Not only you have me as a coach and a mentor, but you actually have your peer to peer people that's going to push you and root for you on the way to the top. Guys that's on the same exact weight limp that you are on and want the same exact results because my game plan is to change the way the school systems teach and teach you the things that need to make an impact in your life. Things that's going to be a high ticket skill that you can use forever where you don't never have to worry about going broke or not eating at night because once you learn how to market and brand yourself then you can eat for a lifetime you get access to my team and everything if you want to go to my free training just to get a sample of the things that's going to be in my program you can actually go to specmentorme.com or i'm gonna put it in the bio only take a certain amount of people every single month so reserve your seat and do not procrastinate because you might just miss out. Now let's get to the podcast. What's up, everybody? This is Spectacular Smith and welcome to the Spectacular Experience. Welcome to another episode of the Dan Locke Show. Today, we have Spectacular Bruce Smith in the house. Also, Dan the Man Locke in the house. Now, Spectacular is best known for his time as a member of the R&B hip-hop group Pretty Ricky. But in recent years, he has reinvented himself as a social media guru. While he's doing Mr. Musician, he's got a solo album coming up soon. The past few years have seen the majority of his time devoted to his new business at Wizard. Spectacular. Welcome to the show. Hey, man. Thanks for having me, man. Uh, tell us a little bit about your journey. What, what made the, the transition from a musician now running an agency? Yeah, so it all really just started from like being on Twitter and figuring out creative ways to actually grow a massive following, not only for myself, but, you know, for people who was actually telling me how to monetize my Twitter accounts. And from that point, after I got that call on me being a person to be able to actually monetize my Twitter pages, I started thinking of creative ways to start growing a massive following. So what I came up with was who was hot at the time. So different parody accounts, uh, role playing accounts, or, you know, basically fan accounts of whoever was popular at the time. And once I started that, I started monetizing and building the followers literally from zero followers all the way up to 6 million followers. And I became the top five in advertising dollars on the whole Twitter platform. But then things kind of changed and, and, and I kind of branched off into the whole Facebook world instead of just Twitter. And I realized that it took me over two years to get those followers that I gained and celebrities already had the, the following already. So if I can actually join forces with them and I help them make money off their following and help them monetize after all the hard work they put in over the years, they should be able to monetize it. And the music industry didn't really understand how to do it. So it was a huge problem in the music industry. So I just really filled that gap up and taught them how to not only, you know, monetize the social media following, but how to grow it at the same time. And this is all while I was on tour, <laughs> uh, doing sold out shows on the road with my group, Pretty Ricky. 
And it's almost like a, a side hustle that turned into a, a good business. Yes, yes, yes. It was it was definitely a side hustle. And I mean, pretty much once thing kind of went downhill, because what goes up must come down. Yes. And at the time that we really started declining uh, with my career and going through legal battles and stuff like that, because mm. we didn't, you know, go downhill as a group because of our music or because we didn't have fans. It was more of a legal battle with the label and they kind of put us on the shelf. So, you know, now we're back, back swinging. So. You know, it's all it's all good at the same time. You learn from that, but it made me focus more on the business aspect of it, which is now, you know, one of the fastest growing companies in America, ranked number 262 on the Inc. 5000 list. So mm. I'm glad it happened, you know. That, that's a fascinating story. I want, there's so many directions we could go. Talk to us about Twitter first, because a lot of people now, they're thinking about like myself, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, uh, my Twitter sucks that's like my weakest <laughs> social media because in my mind oh maybe like twitter's outdated i have this lim- limiting belief uh, what's your take uh, what do you have to say to people saying oh maybe twitter's like no one uses twitter anymore that's like you know that's a dead platform like what's been your experience yeah so really i also, i started on twitter in like 2009 like i said creating those role playing accounts i actually created a cat called grumpy cat uh, on Twitter and like it just went viral. Not a cat is worth a hundred million dollars right That's now. Right. And, mean, uh, and we were talking about the grumpy cat, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. I was the I was the guy behind the cat to make it go viral. It wow. all started, you know, on Twitter and really blowing it up on Twitter. The page had over a million followers on it. But back at the time, I really didn't have any type of you know business. I wasn't business savvy like that when when it came to like the day-to-day business and administrative and like all the like legal stuff. So I didn't have any contracts in place or, so that was like my first big loss I took. That was my first big L blowing this cat up and not getting any type of, you know, residual off of it. And the cat is like famous and merchandise and Walmart and Macy's and all that great stuff. But, um, but really just seeing that transition to growing those pages, I realized that it's, it is, it is a real, it is a real situation on all platforms. I wouldn't necessarily put the magnifying glass on Twitter. I would say all platforms is really, really powerful in its own right, right? You have Twitter, things could go viral at a snap of a finger. And it's a lot, it's really reachable. You can really reach people and get into a conversation in Twitter versus Facebook is more like, you know, the older generation, the older crowd who's on Facebook. And, and it's a different approach versus uh, actual Instagram is more like, you know, a picture. It's like you're telling your your life in a picture. You know, LinkedIn is all about, you know, really getting your professionalism on, you know, and really saying the things that you would say as a professional on LinkedIn. So every every single social media have this different approach. And like YouTube is more of giving them that really long, long, um, that long, what would I call this? It's just it's just really telling your story, right? In mm. video form, but in in a lengthy video form versus the like little micro videos on on Correct. Instagram. Correct. Yeah, so l- longer form of content. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> there <we go. laughs> that's awesome. And, and and do you see that in the say in the entertainment industry in the music industry? Because you brought up a great point. I think a lot of the uh, singers, rappers, performers, uh, they have great talent, or they have a lot of fans, but they just don't know how to monetize it. Or sometimes, like you said, it could be a label company uh, that's almost held them hostage. Uh, why do you think that is? Is it because a lot of them, they're great, they're great performers, but they're not business people, right? They don't understand how business works. And right. then they have this income, you know, ups and downs, could be like roller coaster. Uh, mm-hmm. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I just think that when people get into the music business, they don't realize that it's a music business. They Mm -hmm. just really come in because they want to get their art out to the world. Like they want to just work on their craft. Like Mm -hmm. the average artist is not a business person because all they care about is creating. But the ones that you see actually take their brand to the next level or their life or, or just really taking, you know, being that wealthy individual instead of like getting rich, creating wealth, they all do it based upon them knowing the business part of it or launching a product and utilizing their fan base because artists don't realize that when you become 
successful or famous from the music business, that's just a stepping stepping stone to venture off to do everything else. If you look at Diddy, if you mm. look at Jay-Z, if you look yes. at anyone who's a power player in the music industry, they didn't get rich off the music industry. They got rich off of Ciroc. They got rich off the 4040 Club. They got rich off a of title. They got rich off of Rockaware, Sean John, you know, mm. Beyonce, like all these people that I'm naming right now all stepped outside the music business and actually ventured off to other things and took advantage of the big fan base that they accumulated through all those years off of creating their music off their craft. They ended up gaining millions, hundreds of millions of dollars launching products and getting involved into other businesses. But at the same time, in order for them to even have the capital or the know-how, they actually understood the music business to take advantage of that first. That's a great point. Because from my point of view, actually, uh, Jay-Z, Beyonce were just in Vancouver. Uh, I went to their concert uh, just a, a couple months ago. Spectacular, obviously. Right. Uh, and it was awesome. I got a VIP front row seat. It, it's like great, great evening. It's interesting you brought that up because I think it makes no sense for artists who, who are very good at what they do. But they, sometimes on the surface, it, from the outside, looks very glamorous but then they may be struggling financially, right? Even they're yes. on a tour. During tour, yeah, they make a bunch of money, but then after tour, it's like they're just waiting for, for the next call, the next gig, the next whatever. Versus if they build a business around their fame, now they have the influence. Now they have the capital. Right. Then they don't have to worry about making like money because they're making money from their businesses. This way, yes. I think, actually allows them to express their, their creativity, even more freely because, hey, you know what? If I'm performing, it's nice if I'm making money from the concert. They can demand uh, better terms, but they're not, they're not like counting on it, right? They could wait. They could, they could uh, add value. They could put in the money to create the, the production that they want, right? Right, right. Yeah, like that's the thing. Like right now, I'm actually going on, a, it's called a millennial tour mm. and almost every city is sold out. And we launched a tour like a week ago. Wow. And it's uh, a group called B2K, my group, Pretty Ricky, uh, Mario, Lloyd, and Chingy, and Ying Yang Twins. And mm-hmm. I think I'm missing one more person, uh, Lloyd or, or Bobby V, one of those. And that was huge for our generation. So for all of us to do a tour together, it's amazing to everybody. It went viral. And like this, all the tickets sold out super mm-hmm. fast, right? Mm-hmm. Even I'm on a reality show. I'm on an actual reality show called Love and Hip Hop that airs on VH1 every every Wednesday at 10 p.m. Eastern time zone. And oh, nice. throughout this whole process of doing all this stuff, like I don't care if I make any money from either one of those things mm. because my company is killing it, you know, after helping all these, you know, personality brands and and aspiring talent become famous on social media and like turning their followers into dollars. I make money off of that. So it doesn't really matter if I like make money off of that because now when I do it, I don't have the stress. Like you said earlier, I don't have any type of thoughts because my company is on autopilot, right? I already have people that's accountable for getting things done. And I have people in charge of certain things where I can freely go out and, and perfect my craft or go enjoy myself on stage mm. versus to not being able to do that. Mm. And isn't it interesting when you are not even thinking about the money, the tickets are sold out, you don't need to worry about it, money comes to you faster, right? Right, exactly, because you're not even worrying about it at all. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so it's all, all powerful stuff, man, once you really understand, you know, the power of everything. So let's say someone comes to you. Um, do you work with talents where they're thinking of growing to using social media to grow their brand? Or do you work with people already have a big name, but they don't know how to monetize their social media or both? Yeah. So, so pretty much I started off with celebrities and then I realized that I can help and way more people because it's a proven formula that I'm doing. It's not a formula that that only work on celebrities. The only reason why I was doing celebrity accounts because they already had the following. But mm-hmm. once I realized that people could just pay me for the amount of, for my for my expertise and, and help them get their story out to the world because they have amazing product or they have amazing brand. Mm-hmm. And long as you can pay me 5K, you know, minimum, then I can actually help you 
grow your social media following in, in, in on whatever platforms you choose. It can be two platforms. It can be three platforms. If it could be LinkedIn, Twitter, it's all the same blueprint that I help my clients grow from zero to millions of followers. And then once they get to a certain point, I can help them monetize their following also and, and add them into my monetization platform. Okay, this is kind of like a, a self-serving question. Let's say um, you work with me. Looking at my social media, we've got a 1.1 million on on YouTube. We've got you know, pretty strong following on Instagram, 600,000 plus. Facebook, 1.5. Mm-hmm. Twitter, like sucks, thousands, right? Horrible. LinkedIn, decent. Uh, if you were to work with me, what what would you help me do? Yeah, so I will figure out I will figure out what type of product will actually work for your brand. Since you mm-hmm. already are an influencer, mm-hmm. my job and my company job, which which they're amazing, and they will figure out what is the best product to launch for you. Or mm-hmm. you know, right now you already have like programs and things like that. Correct. And Correct. and actually, I have a couple of your your guys that went through your program as myself, <laughs> guys. So oh, I just, good. Like, good. I just wanted to plug that in. Also, oh, they're great guys. So you do some great training. Uh, so. So actually, you know, we have those different things and uh, and we'll figure out what works best for you. So we already have funnels set up. We already have, you know, all these different proven strategies. And we just have to figure out once we know this is your product, is it a program? Is it a mm. physical product? Is it a digital product? And once we figure all that out, then the next step would be marketing. How are we going to do it? Are we going to do lead generation? Are we going to do Facebook ads, Google ads, YouTube ads? What is the approach we want to, to bring that traffic to your brand or to your product? And then as you're building your, your actual brand up, you have those fans that's just crazy about you. We can then target those fans and then create a lookalike audience and then find even more people that's interested in which the product that you actually offer. Mm, makes sense. And then what if, let's say you, uh, someone comes to you and say, they already have the following, let's say they are a celebrity, and they don't have a product, their product is their talent, or they, they have a show, they have a concert coming up, how do you help them to monetize? Because the way that you do it is so out of the box, right? It's so mm-hmm. creative, the way that you can monetize. Before we get to the second half of today's show, I want to share with you my new book. It's called Unlock It the master key to wealth, success, and significance. If you're listening to my show, if you want to take your income and your business to the next level, unlock it. It It's a book for anyone who wants to understand how to build wealth fast and multiply it. It is a sum of all my most profitable business and success strategies. I can tell you that out of the 13 books that I've written in my entire career, this is my finest work yet. Get your copy today. Go to www.unlockitbook.com, unlockitbook.com. Also, you'll get some exclusive bonuses when you get your copy today. Again, go to www.unlockitbook.com. Ties, walk us through that process. Yeah, it all depends. Like I say, everybody is a different situation. So if you come to me and you already have a product and you are, you already have a brand, then I will figure out a strategy to help you grow with other influencers or with other in, uh, niche pages or theme pages, like whatever pages makes the most sense. It might be a paid media strategy with your content, like, and we target specific people. Like it all depends, right? We run you through our technology and see what, mm. what gets calculated. And then we have my team, which is like amazing people. And, and like, it took me so long to find this power team. And now I have the ability to really take ev- any and everybody brand to the next level. We started off with celebrities. Then we started off with Fortune 500 companies, Zappos, Clark's brand, and, and like all these Fortune 500 companies. And then I realized that, all right, it's cool with all these like popular people. Then I started bringing up the smaller dogs. I, I started one guy from zero followers. His name is Walter Jacobson. Like he started off with like, you know, uh, zero followers. We, we started it from zero and, and shot his following all the way up to 160,000 followers. He's a 61-year-old therapist. Wow. 
Wow. <laughs> so like, it all depends on what you want your strategy. And he just wanted to grow. He didn't really have no, like he was a rich guy, you know, he's rich. He, he, mm-hmm. he didn't really care. He made all his money. He just wanted to be an influencer. So we took a guy like that who didn't even really care about creating content and we figure out how to give him what he wanted. And then he monetized back off his speaking engagements and his books, which he gets like tons of those now. And his mm-hmm. book is selling like crazy. Mm, I see. And during the transition, even when you're growing your, your company from an entrepreneur perspective, what are some of the just some of the challenges? Even I'm sure it's not smooth sailing, right? It, oh, there's some absolutely ups, not. <laughs> there's some ups and downs. I'm sure there's still ups and downs. But what are some of the things that ha- have happened and what have you learned from those lessons? Yeah, man, I don't even know where to start with that. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk two hours just oh, on mistakes, man. right? <laughs> Three hours, four hours. Like I just made a mistake yesterday that just cost me, right? So I'm just yeah. learning from it, right? <laughs> so, I mean, but but honestly, so I, I, I figured out a strategy that if I literally put $2,500 into something, I get back 60 grand, all right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I tested something else to this time I paid 12 grand on another situation, but then it only brought me back six grand. So I was like, all right, cool. Like it's not the end of the world. Like yes. I can always go back to the other thing. So I figured out a way to like start testing things. And I really believe in the 80-20 rule. Mm-hmm. Focus on that 80%, right? But you still have that 20% that you're just testing little things. And always, I always see that little 20% that I'm testing always end up moving towards that 80% and adding towards that 80%. Because what I did was when I was first coming up, I actually was just sticking with one model. And Mm. then it just went dry on me, right? I was doing Facebook, uh, a strategy on Facebook. I was making 250 grand a month just off that one strategy. Mm. And it got cut short. It just went flatline within like 30 days. So Mm. imagine you have one strategy making $250,000 every single month, every single month. And then one thing get changed. And then you got to, you got to pivot at that point. So now I realize I have to do the 80, 20 rule. So that was one of the things that I learned not to focus on one thing to always, you know, put focus on that 80% and then have that 20% as that test, right? And focus on the thing that is that, like, I had to reverse it and focus on whatever that thing that was, I was doing that 20% that was bringing me 80% of the results, right? And I had to shift that to 80%. So that was one of the things I learned. I mean, I, when I first started this whole thing, I didn't know nothing about business. I didn't know nothing about leadership. I didn't know anything about sales. I didn't know anything about credit. I didn't know anything about nothing. I was just an artist with a hustle and a drive. And when I was that, I I started really putting everything into play. Like I started reading books. I started taking programs, you know, and and really apply myself. And what led me to creating my own program called Adwazar Academy, where now I'm I'm actually teaching all the struggles I went through because I couldn't find a program that had everything in it. I couldn't find nothing that gave me an entrepreneur MBA. You know, I even, I even uh, enrolled in the Harvard business school because I wanted to see what they was teaching that I didn't know already from the streets, from right. books. And now the next thing was school. Cause I felt like school, school felt me. And, and now I, I learned everything throughout my journey and I put everything in a, in a course format and video modules and had all my millionaire friends and who's really successful and had them teaching my program. So now they can actually teach the the expertise that I'm good at, but I'm not amazing at. And now they're teaching them my program to help all my students succeed because I didn't have that opportunity. Right. I had to learn about CRM systems. I didn't know anything about that and keeping (laughs) up to date with my relationships and HubSpot and all that stuff. I didn't know that. I didn't know about sales and how to sell through personality. You know, every like people got one sales script and then that's it. But in reality, you got to sell in the four type of people, right? They might not want to hear that type of sales pitch because it don't mean nothing to them. It's not connecting because people, people buy from people who they trust, who, who they, you know, who, who they actually like. And we can go on and on about what, what they will actually, you know, buy from you, but it's, it's a different approach for each person. So I had to learn all that stuff. And, uh, and, and this is some of the things that I had to learn throughout my process, like going through a hundred leads and, li- and ending up with like zero, zero closes, right? That's it's painful. Like, it's painful, <laughs> right? But that, that creates, that creates that, 
you know, that gives you resilience when you could just come and like learn from that and use that as a lesson because every L I take, every loss I take, it's a lesson for me and I get better and better and better. And everything that I went through in my life from going flat broke, from being on top of the world and going flat broke, the building up an agency, to losing, losing, taking a bunch of L's on things that I shouldn't have took an L on because I didn't listen to certain people, mm-hmm. not surrounding myself around the right people. And now, oh my God, my, my power circle, my inner circle is so powerful. If I got anything that I want to know, I can literally do text a few people and get the answer to whatever. It's, if it's sales, like I'm, I hit up Dan Lock if I need some sales training <laughs> or sales tips. Like I could call that person. Or if I want to know about technology, I could call my mil- my billionaire mentor Jeff Hoffman, and he'll 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 give me the answer for it. Like no matter what it is, I network so much, you know, and try to create and add value to people. I realize that everything comes back tenfold. So now when I do stuff for people, I don't ask for anything because it always come back. You know, it always come back some type of way. It's very, very true because I think a lot of people, they go out there, they try to, especially when they talk to successful people, they always go to them. They want something from them, right? Because yes. they're successful. Oh yeah, help poor little me uh, or give me this or give me money or give me whatever. That's a worse approach. But if, you go, yeah, if you go to them and say, hey, how can I add value to what you do? Like one of the most profound questions I ask everybody that I meet, right? is what is the one project that you are working on right now that I could add value to? Right. Boom. Ooh, that's a good one. I like right? that. I don't care if they are a CEO of a billion dollar company. I don't care if they are a millionaire. It doesn't matter who they are. Some, someone is working on something at any given time, right? It, yeah. could be non, it could be nonprofit. It could be charity or the new book. doesn't matter what it is. When I ask that question, they're always thinking, hmm, you know what, Dan? I actually have this that I'm working on. I'd say, great, yes. right? I could help you with that. Um, and it works so well versus most people, they go to them, oh yeah, I've got this thing. Can you, can you fund my deal? Can you do this for me? Get- oh my no. God, no. that don't work. And yeah. so I, I agree with you 110% and I actually wrote that down. Like I'm gonna use that, right? Mm-hmm. And, 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 that's, and one of the things is add value first. And, and my rule of thumb is if you wanna ask for one thing from a person, at least do 10 things for mm-hmm. him before you even ask for that one thing. Because yes. when you do ask for that one thing, he's more likely to help you versus you coming to him on the first time meeting him or meeting him a couple of times. He's reluctant to help you because it's like, yo, you're just a taker, right? But if you're a giver, he's more likely to help you, Mm -hmm. right? And even the fact that I wrote that down, like one another thing that that I had to learn is always learn. Like Mm -hmm. you never know too much. So I can learn something from every everybody it don't matter and and i speak last like i talk i'll be quiet and i'll be a a listener because even that's a skill within itself just sit back listen don't don't listen to talk and and really learn man and that was something powerful and i wrote that down i'm gonna use (laughs) that (laughs) give give us gang and definitely and and if they are successful guess what you don't need to ask they would want to ask hey you know what you've been so generous helping me what can i do for you Right? Yeah. It's always, you don't need to go to them with, they would be thinking, how can I give back? Because that's why they're successful in the first place. Yep. Right. Most of them, not, not hundred percent. You have some, some people who are, who are a little bit more selfish, who are successful, but that is like a very, very small percentage. Yeah. Small. Most, most successful people want to help. Yeah. Most, most successful people want to help others and by them helping others, you know, a lot of times it's, it's, it's reciprocated, right? It's reciprocation rule. They're going to actually help back. Like if you help somebody, if I help make you a million dollars, you're going to want to help me make $2 million because I yes. just helped you make a million dollars, right? I was just talking about this in my podcast, um, mm. The Spectacular Experience, and it just hit number one on the music charts. Oh, congrats. Uh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So my podcast is The Spectacular Experience. And in that, in that podcast, I basically talk about, you know, how you should just be helping others and, and how, you know, every time I, I do something from people, I don't want nothing from it. Because you'll be surprised. It don't even be the person you help. It'd be the person that they told that you helped them and it comes around in full circle and somebody else end up helping you. And the, and the universe figures out the way to give you, you know, that, that, that great deed back. Mm. And I also want to pick your brain. I want to go into some specifics. How did you learn to speak in the voices of people like Beyonce and Jay-Z on, on Twitter to grow those 
pages like so fast? Like what, what is the secret sauce? Yeah, it's really about automation. Automation, really figuring out, you know, how to, how to, you know, use, how to use other people's content, right? And at the same time, editing it towards their voice, right? And thinking of, all right, so what would Jay-Z do? Jay-Z would be, you know, might be an inspirational person because it's about business. Fe- uh, females love love quotes. So maybe Beyonce will post like love quotes. All right, Will Ferrell, he'll crack jokes. You know, Grumpy Cat, everything is angry. So it's like, oh, I have fun one day. It was awful. So like you, they, you would have like these different things that you can just automate and, and basically take all these tweets all at one time on different pages that have a lot of content and you can just repurpose those contents because it's generic content. So you don't have to worry about credit and everything because it's just generic, all right? And you can just keep those things rolling out and then create a distribution channel with other, like the underground world of people who try to help each other actually grow their pages. You post me, I post you. You post me, I post you. And we keep doing that back and forth. And as you're having this viral content on your page, it starts to build up. And as it's building up, you're having that, that, that strategy to actually monetize your social media channel. So everything is like super powerful at that point because now the money is rolling in, your brand is building up. And now Beyonce is getting even more famous. Like um, Will Ferrell, uh, page like some of the fans used to tell Will Ferrell he need to be like my parody page because <laughs> he didn't ever crack jokes or say anything funny. Right, right. And when you even work with um, clients, do you find that, uh, do they come to you with a very clear business model or do you find that they're kind of a little bit fussy, they're a little bit vague about what they're trying to do? Usually they don't, they don't know. They, they're usually stuck. They don't know how to grow their, their, their following. They're, they're pivoted, you know, to something else or they just flatlined and plateaued or they just feel like they don't know how to, to, to draw the attention of the actual demographic or their audience mm. or their, you know, and they need help finding their customers online. And that's what we specialize in. We find, we specialize in growing all your fan base of your potential customers in one place at one time on your social media channel. So now when you go to post something, you're posting to a crowd that want to hear what you got to say, right? And we, we basically nurture them throughout the process versus just sell, sell, sell. Because people don't, people don't like when somebody want to sell something to them, right? They want to know that you're actually giving me value. So then when you do sell something, I'm more likely to support you and everything you have going on because now you're building that community that loves the crap out of you. Mm, and it's I always describe that as the the difference between farming and hunting, right? If you just hunt, you know, you 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 eat what you kill, that's okay. You're selling, selling, selling. But when you're nurturing the relationship with your fan base, that you are farming, right? You may not see anything come out of it for one month, two months, six months, a year, two years, right? Sometimes, right. right? But then when you, when it, when the, uh, the, the fruits, when the, when you harvest it, then now you don't need to hunt anymore because you have this massive farm that would provide you with enough food for a long, long time. That's the way that I see it. Right. Mm-hmm. And no, I a hundred percent agree with that. That makes a hundred percent sense. And those are my best clients that understand that this is, this is a long play, right? Yes. This is a long play. If you really want to come in this and be successful, you can't be, you know, short, short sighted, right? It has to be, you have to see ahead, right? You can't be a month, two months. You're like, Hey, like, what's up? Like my page is not growing as fast. Mm -hmm. Like, but it took somebody, you know, one of my clients, he actually grew to over 6 million followers and his page went viral, but it took up to like seven months for something to take off. And he got 1.7 million followers, no, 1.6 million followers in six days. And when his video had 150 million views, now he's, he's consistently making 30 to 60 grand a month just off his social channel. So if he would have been a type of person that would have been like, oh, it's two months, like why I'm not exploding? But it's a process. Let the process play out. And then as it's playing out, you will see everything unfold and you'll be surprised on how powerful for this, this, this proven process can be once you take your time with it. It's very true because I do have people uh, look at my YouTube channel and they, they think, oh, you need, you, need, you need one of those viral videos. And I tell people, you know, I didn't get my first viral video. I define viral like a, a video that's gotten more than 1 million views, okay? I didn't get my first viral video until I think I made 954 videos. 
See right. what I'm saying? Right? You know what I'm it's saying? the 954th one. Finally, I had one that got viral. Yeah. <laughs> See? See how that works? That's what I'm saying. So, yes. But people don't understand that they're impatient. Give us a few more of these uh, like stories. I, I'm sure you have a lot of success stories. Like when you work with clients, you, you just blew up their page or blew up their, their followers. Yeah, man, I've got plenty of stories, right? So it's like one of the guys we was, uh, we was, man, I, got, so I don't even know where to start. I mean, I, I talked about Walter. I talked about uh, Mighty Duck. I talked about Grumpy Cat. I talked about our parody accounts. I mean, I can pretty much go all day, right? Um, I would say, I'm going to say somebody smaller, right? So mm. I'm going to say like a, a guy that we started with. I'm going to talk about my group page. So at the time when I actually branched off from Twitter and I, and I went to actually Facebook because I was actually having a conversation with a guy named Soldier Boy, Sean Kingston, and it was explaining to me on how they was more viral on Facebook than Twitter. And I'm just like, wow. So you're telling me that everything is time far more viral on Facebook and Twitter. I was like, I was blown away because I was a hundred percent on Twitter at the time. Mm. So I went over to Facebook and I knew nothing about Facebook. Like literally I probably, you know, like you say, suck, like you suck on Twitter. I sucked on yes. Facebook. Right. Yes. <laughs> so, so basically I, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't suck at anything, but I, I basically didn't know anything about it. And, but I knew I had a proven formula that I can do on any platform. So I used my same methods. That I was growing all these parody accounts with and I started my page from like little to nothing. And within a year, I pretty much blew it up to over 4 million followers and started generating at least a quarter million dollars in ad revenue. And once I actually started that, that's what gave me, you know, that confidence to start taking on other celebrities. And once I did that, it was just like through the roof. We had guys making 20 grand a month, 60 grand a month, you know, from bodybuilders to models to Playboy, Playboy bunnies, the porn stars, to mm -hmm. musicians, singers, you name what we had them, like over a hundred celebrities really helping to monetize their brand. But that's not really what I get pleasure out of. Honestly, I get pleasure out of helping a CEO or a speaker or, or someone who has a startup, you know, that has a great story or a great brand and taking their page from zero followers and blowing it up to like 10,000 followers in like two months, you know, or, or taking them to, you know, that 500,000 mark and when they didn't have, they didn't even have any social media at all. Mm. Right. And really taking things to the next level for their brand because they just feel stuck or they don't know how to grow their social media following, or they just feel like they're not staying consistent at all. And they just missing out on opportunities. Mm, that makes sense. And from, from all these case studies, when you work with like entrepreneurs, when you work with celebrities, one of the quotes I love uh, from Jay-Z is, you know, I'm not a businessman, I'm a businessman, right? Uh, yeah. And, and I love that quote because he is. Like Jay-Z is the business, uh, not just a personal brand, but everything that he has, from my perspective, mm -hmm. is an extension of him, right? It's an extension of his... Uh, personal brand and I think like you said mm -hmm. you know, a number of celebrities who quote unquote who got it who got that model where they they leverage their because nobody's famous all the time nobody's famous like forever right there's always that maybe they're they're the the hottest person hottest thing in, in the in the next few years but no one stays hot forever right um, but they're right. able to leverage that like f looking at that Looking at though that model, what goes through your mind? What's what what? How do you view that model? About how does that work? Building the personal brand, building the following, but building a business around it. What's your perspective? Yeah, I think it's super important. I feel like if you start building a personal brand, you should have a way to monetize it. Like, they I don't want. feel like you should just be building, building just to build a personal brand. Like, I feel like you should have a game plan, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm going to build my personal brand and get to the masses, I need to make sure I'm having the right plan and associate myself with the right people that I can have whatever my vision is, I can execute on that vision and thinking, thinking ahead because that's what it's about. 
and getting a great team, an A team. Like you need to like look at your team right now. Like whoever's listening says, look at your team right now. If you're in front of them, just look at them. Look at everybody. If you're in the office or even just think to yourself, is this team that you right have right now going to take you to what your goals are or what will you want to be in the next 10 years or the next five years? If, if not, then it's time to get star players, right? If you got C players or, or D players or B players, like that's what type of results you're going to get. You need A players, right? And that, that way you recruit the best talent and always recruit, always, right? Always have your eye on somebody and keep in touch with them, touch points, you know? And so because things happen all the time. And, and as things are happening, they think about you because you're on top of mind. So just building the right team and having that vision, you know, and really educating yourself and making sure that whatever you decide you want to do, you stick with it no matter what happens because you're going to go through that roller coaster. <laughs> you're going to go through that roller coaster. Like, you're going to feel like you're going to go bankrupt and everything is going to work out for you. And you're going to feel like, oh, man, I'm about to lose it all again. And then you're going to get back into it. Like, so, but you can't give up. You got to have, you know, you got to have that drive. You got to put in those extra hours. So why you, you know, you, you, you don't feel like doing something, you have to say, all right, even though I don't feel like doing it, I'm going to go that extra mile. And I'm going to go home. Even though I don't feel like going to the gym today, like I got to go to the gym. Even though I don't feel like, you know, studying this, 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 this competitor, and, you know, when I get home from the office, I put an extra two hours in and actually study the competition, right? And it's just about doing things what you don't want to do. And that's what make you great. So as you're building your brand and you're monetizing, you got to have all these things in place so you can actually become successful in life. Mm. And what are some of the key uh, characteristics of, of viral content? Because I think that's your that's your superpower, right? That's, that's what you're very, very good at, creating that, that viral content. Yeah, it's really about mimicking other viral content. That's the, that's really the secret, man. It's not really even nothing nice genius, right? So we have technology that pulls the most viral content, right? But but honestly, if you were to create content, all you have to do is just look at other content that went viral and just duplicate what they did. So if 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 you post an apple and every time somebody posts an apple, it's getting a thousand likes, and you usually get uh, five five likes or twenty likes. Mm. then you know for sure that your your actual audience like apples. So now you go get a green apple, blue apple, like whatever that is, right? And you mm. just figure out how to create more content with apples in it because that's what, that's what your fan base likes. So I know it's just like a crazy analogy, but it's really just that simple. You have to mm. figure out what they like, test it. Some people might like to follow you for videos. Some mm. people might like to follow you for your quotes. Some people might like to follow you because you look good, right? But so once you know that, you get to really focus on the things that they like versus the things that they don't like. And that way you can really build your audience up because you actually see in them content that they actually like. Mm. And, and what are some of the key uh, data uh, analytics that you look at? It's really about comments. Comments is really important to me because anybody could get likes, but when you have people actually taking time out of their day and actually writing you something, mm. that's when you know you have a, a powerful page, right? Mm. If you look at some of these influencers, I've seen one influencer have like 15 million followers and they're getting a thousand comments. I'm like, mm. I mean, how the heck are you get like, where's your influence? Like anybody could just go through the feed and like, go to next like, but when somebody take time and say, you know, I love you, Dan, you're amazing. You inspire me. Like that's, that's influence. Right. And if you can get somebody to, to take an action, you know, other than just a simple like and like take a few seconds out of the day and like really write you something that's powerful. So that's that's what I look at in terms of analytics. And also, it's interesting uh, that the haters, too, where they took the time to write you some oh, shit. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's, yes. it's so funny. I get uh, I guess I, I could see where I have some haters where they come in on a lot of videos and I'm like, if you hate this stuff so much, why do you watch it? But they watch a lot of videos, right? But they still mm-hmm, take the time to mm-hmm. comment. Oh man, I fucking hate you, man. Like that kind of thing. I, I just find it fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> they hate you, but they but, watch when, it. But listen to this. They're really your fans. Deep down inside, they really want to be you. They're really your fans because why are they following you? Why are they taking the time out their day for you to influence them to comment, right? And if you don't have those type of people, then you're not doing something right. They got to be so envious that you're so successful and the things that you're doing is making an impact that, they're, that, that they want to come in and try to throw you off 
You know, they want to throw you off your, your horse. They feel yeah. you on a high horse. They want to throw you off. But in reality, you're creating content not only for yourself, you know, to, 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 to really teach others. Because when you're teaching, you learn better from teaching. But at the same time, the people who are listening to everything that you're, that you're saying is, is really going back and implementing that. And this changing their lives for the better. I guarantee there's so many people out there right now that's listening to your content or, or watching your content that's implementing that in their business and they're seeing results from it. But the people who, who is too lazy, who want the handout that's pointing the finger at everybody and saying, it's your fault, it's your fault, it's your fault why I'm not successful or they're waiting for the handout. Those are the people who's your fan who deep down want to be you that's commenting those hateful things. Mm, and of course, like I always say, haters don't hate you; they they hate themselves, right? Uh, where Absolutely. They they see your your content. They they it's like they don't want to watch you, but they do watch you. And and especially with what I say, it's always I always say the the, the brutal truth, right? It's like you may mm-hmm. not like what I have to say, but it's the damn truth, right? You may not agree yeah. with what I have to say, but it is the damn truth, right? And it hurts sometimes. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that's what it hurts. Yeah, that's why some. That's what what provokes them a bit sometimes. But you know what, though, honestly, that truth helps you because it makes no sense for somebody to sugarcoat something, even with friends around you, mm. if they're not gonna tell you, like, "Hey, spec, you bullshitting, bro." Like you say, you was gonna do this, right? You've been talking about the same dream for three years. You didn't make any step towards that. Like, like it's the that that hurts, right? But guess what? That's gonna do. That's gonna motivate me to get off my ass. And be like, damn, you know what? That's you're absolutely right. And start leaving me accountable for everything that I said. But people don't want to hear that. But that's what's gonna get you to where you need to go, not the yes men around you. You need somebody that's gonna call you out on your bullshit. Correct. That's that's who we need in life for sure. Uh, I also want to talk about a little bit about fame because that's a. Uh, I think you will have a lot of. Um, experience to share someone let's say mm-hmm. they are not influencers now they now they've grown like place from zero to now to to millions of fans where of course you're you're in in, in a in a group that's a different story you you tour so you have a lot of fans how do mm-hmm. you deal with fame from like no fame and and after you you have fame and now mm-hmm. today how you look at fame yeah, man, it's, it's kind of hard for me because I always was in the spotlight, even when like when I was in the third grade, I was in a dance group performing in front of a crowd. Right. Like I was always like this extrovert, right? Mm. And love people and just mm. like I, I feed off of people. I get energy off of people. Mm. Uh, so like if you ever meet me, like you're going to see me smiling, joking, like, you know, talkative, <laughs> like that's just me. And honestly, me making that transition from being in third grade and dance groups to performing in talent shows in high school to 2005 having a number one you know song on the billboard charts on a mm. top 100 or whatever whatever it is right and the number one album on the billboard charts and all that great stuff right going to all these tours i always been always been like cocky at times when i made that transition because mm. as you starting to see more people give you more attention mm. the more you get cocky right and easy to get let that as you get in head right 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 so i was this cocky guy right it's like mm. i didn't really talk much you know when it came to 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 people i didn't know back then mm. like i'm a totally different person now but mm. on that uprise of, of of actually getting more and more attention and you know, and, and girls feeding to my ego and girls yes. just fainting at my at my shows and crying and like like trying to get a kiss on the cheek and then like fall out and all type of crazy stuff. So mm. that stuff started getting to you. But mm. as you start being around more and more successful people, once I start getting into the business part of it, I realized that that don't get you nowhere, right? And that's why a lot of these artists, they are broke as hell they're buying a bunch of liabilities instead of investing in assets because they don't have the right people around them and as you're having this cocky mentality you kind of lose out on opportunities because you know if i don't really communicate with people who reach out to me or or help other individuals because i feel like i'm better than them i miss out on opportunity mm-hmm. right i like on my come up of my business of growing into this business entrepreneur guy like I had to go to seminars and learn, like sit down and like 
in a seat like a student and take my notes down. But I'm usually, a you'll be on, usually you'll be on the stage. Now you're sitting in the audience right. writing notes and learning. Yes. Yes, exactly. Now I'm a student. You know, now I'm in the, uh, now I'm the speaker on stage now. But even if sometimes I'll go and if it's another speaker, I'll sit, I'll sit in the back and I'll listen to him. I'll sit backstage and I'll watch him and take my notes. Like I just took your notes earlier on something you just said and always be learning. So just being in the fame and the spotlight, you got to understand that you're not better than nobody, right? And what goes up comes down. And I had to learn that the hard way, right? I felt like I was the man. And, and then once I got around people like my mentor, like I was saying, Jeff Hoffman, mm. this was like this one, this one situation changed my life. Like I was sitting down with this, this guy, like so price line for like 70, 70 something billion dollars. And so I'm you did for like 60 Jeff, something. Uh, I've had Jeff on my show, like, I think a couple of years ago. So the f- that man is amazing. Amazing. That man is amazing. I mean, and this is like, this changed my life. Like Jeff, I was sitting down with Jeff. We, I would speak. This is my first speech ever. Right. And he actually got booked the same time I got booked as the keynote speaker. And this is my first speech and he was there for it. So I was all excited. I was like mm-hmm. this little, little boy all over again in the candy <laughs> shop. My mentor is here. Like he's going to hear me speak for the first time. He started coaching me a little bit. And and I didn't find out until I got booked for it. And, and it was in Hawaii for an organization called EO. And if you're an entrepreneur and you make over a million dollars, yes. please join EO. It's going to be the best decision you ever made in your life. Mm-hmm. All right. So back to the story. So so I was there and I, I had my, my girl with me, my, my son, my fiance with me and my son. And um, and he's at the table and he's looking at the table. He's like, yo, Speck, you want anything to drink? I was like, what? I was like, yo, like literally like you're this billionaire dude, like you're a billionaire. Like, of course you're my mentor and we have a relationship, but like you're asking everybody at the table, do they want something to drink? So you can go and he literally, I told him, no, he still bought me back some drinks. He brought my girl some food. Like this guy is literally going to a table of every, like, of course, like everybody's making, like it was a powerful table, but come on now, like you're the richest guy at the table. Like, why are you going to get everybody food and drink? So at that point, I like, it really snapped to me. I was just like, you know what? If this guy who had multiple successful exits and companies and, and a billionaire, like who the hell am I? Right. At that point, who am I like to, to, to treat anybody, any, anything other than great. No matter if you're the janitor, no matter if you're the the, the president of the United, well, forget him. No matter if you're the, uh, uh, no matter if you're CEO Beyonce or Jay Z. Yes, yes, it's true. It, don't, it don't matter. It don't matter if you're the intern. I treat everybody the same way because he taught me that you need like it, it's ama- When you're a servant leader, that's always like an amazing leader, and that's that's who he is. Jesus was a servant leader. Right. No matter like he was the son of God and he still was a servant leader, not to get all spiritual, but, you know, he'll wipe people's feet. He'll do anything it takes to lead his people. And that's what I realized. And that's what I do now. Uh, it's it's a, that's a great story. I have a similar story where I was talking to a very successful entrepreneur who has had probably like a dozen exits. Right. And I asked him to go to lunch with me. And I was there and I, I sat down with him. I, I thought, okay, great. I'm going to pick his brain, right? The minute we sat down, the first thing he did, he pulled a journal and a pen. And he started yeah. asking, asking me questions. I'm like, let me, let me ask you this. Is, is he a billionaire? Is, uh, close, is that a billionaire close, guy? Or is it like close? Close, close right? Yes, because all, like, that's a real lesson. Every like billionaire, it's like, it's impressive when you come and you have a pen in the pad oh, and they write God. down everything. They don't depend on their memory. They write everything on a notepad, but go ahead, Dan. Sorry yeah, about that. And I'm like, wow. And he, he ended up asking me like most of the questions and I'm like, holy, <laughs> holy shit. Cause I'm here to learn. And he's so humble, just like Jeff. So humble, and, yeah, man. and I'm like, it's amazing. Say, it's just, it's same aha for me. It's like, what the fuck do I know, right? It's like I don't, right? Like that, it, it taught us how to be humble, right? Where, where yeah. I, exactly, like all, all the fame and all that, it feeds the ego, and that's why all oh, then they get the Lamborghini, they get all that stuff. It's it, then it feeds more of the ego. But the mm-hmm. truth is, I believe it just it covers their own, covers up their own insecurities. That's what it is. Yeah. Right. Versus, yeah. hey, hey, the guys who are secure, they're like, no, I can, learn, I can learn from everybody. I don't care who you are. I have a pen, I have a notepad. Yep. Like, I, it's a, it's an, it's an attitude. That's exactly why they're successful. Right. 
Um, mm-hmm. I learned a lot from that experience, and that's a great aha moment from from Jeff. Uh, when I talked with him, uh, he was gracious enough to give me his time, and I think he was driving at the time. Uh, and we, we talk, and I uh, ask him different questions, brought him on the show. Exactly the same thing. I a- almost find the opposite for most of them. The more successful they are. Like I'm talking, you know, you, the guys who are very, very cocky, usually like a million bucks, right? Um, yep. The guys at the 10, 50, 100, more humble. The guys at like 100 and above, they are very, very, because they don't need anything from you. Mm-hmm. They really don't need anything from you. So if they're giving you the time, they are like asking questions, they are, they are giving back. Uh, it's always coming from a, a, a very different place. I just find it, it's not what the media thinks, right? The portrays all, oh, you know, wealthy people, successful people, they're greedy, they're selfish. That's not been my experience at all, right? I'm sure you, you yeah. feel the same way. Um, Absolutely. Everybody who got real money that's around me, Mm-hmm. And I try to keep my power circle as powerful as possible because, you know, I just try to help everybody and, and we all help each other. But, man, they're the most humble people and they really want to help you as much as possible because they got everything in life. Yeah, so exactly. now it's about taking that same knowledge and handing it down to somebody else. I asked Jeff, I was like, Jeff, why do you mentor me? I was like, you, you gotta, I mean, I, of course I'm a successful artist and like, you know, I have a fast growing company, but like that still don't even amount to like, you know, what you accomplished. So, but he told me, he was like, listen, the reason why I mentor you is because I know you're going to take what I give you and I share with you and you're going to spread it to other people. It's not just going to stop with you. And that was another moment for me. I'm like, damn, like that was super powerful for me because I'm just like, I do do that. Right. And I mm-hmm. never thought that somebody would be paying attention to that. Cause I try to help as much as possible. Like if you give me information, right. The same information you just told me about, mm-hmm. you know, figuring out what is your project, what mm-hmm. project you working on mm-hmm. and how can I add value to that? Mm-hmm. I'm going to take that. And I'm going to put it on my podcast or I'm going to do it on my video. I'm going to go on the talk show and go talk about that interview. And I'm going to say that because people need to know that. And that that needs to spread because the people who do want to take action, they need all the tools they can possibly get to actually help them succeed. And if you're going to sit down as a billionaire and give me knowledge, it's, it's my job and my obligation to take that information and pass it on to others. So well said. So well said. What if someone is say they may be ready to hire you um, to help with social media, or maybe they just want to take your program and kind of do it themselves. Maybe then they're not that, not that stage yet. They just kind of DIY want to learn your info. Talk to us a little bit about your program. Uh, who is it for? Who is it not for? Yeah, it's really for anybody who really want to build up their social media and find their customers online. Mm. And it's for people who like either want to start an online business. So if you actually have a skill set and you actually want to actually create a business around it and you want all the tools to actually run an effective, successful business from operations to uh, uh, actually, you know, selling through personality or figuring it out. But then you kind of got that on lock. And then you have... Um, Oh, Dan Lock. Oh, that was dope. All right. So, uh, so <laughs> then, so, so basically, <laughs> so basically you have, you know, everything you need to create a successful business CRM system, credit, um, um, actually tax, tax write-offs. And like this one strategy that I have in my, in my program for my uh, CPA came in and started teaching my finances and mastering money. And in one strategy ma- saved me over 60 grand on my taxes off that one strategy. Right. Nice, and then, nice. So from everything that you need to learn from building your business, building your brand on social media from, from Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn, we teach you that. And then the next step would be the operations and everything extra that comes with building the business. So we, we, we take you throughout the, the journey, building the brand. Once you build the brand, start your business. If you don't have one already, we'll teach you from front to back on how to start a business. Like this one product, we started from scratch, like zero. We just came up with an idea. In 30 days, it's called a Diamond Santa Sweater Campaign. We hit over $1.2 million. And then in, and then in the next 30 days, we hit over $2 million and sold 35,000 units. And we documented that process because we knew, me and my partners knew we was going to have to do that process again. So we actually documented from the very first text message we got on figuring out the product and, and wanting to do it all the way to launch from the manufacturer, the, 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 the production to the customer service to, you know, how we actually 
you know, get the whole situation. So we have that in the program. So if you decide you want an agency, whatever it is, right? And that's what we have as the money making part of the business and then the marketing part. So we have millionaire mentors that's in there that's going to teach you how they became successful on marketing on Facebook, how they became successful on marketing on Instagram, how they became successful up lead generation on, on LinkedIn. So all these different components on once you get your business started, now we teach you how to market it. So we go through every aspect. I call it the entrepreneur MBA, right? So the, the program is called Ad Wizard Academy. So if you want to like learn how to spell it, it's basically Ad Wizard without the D. Mm, so A-D-W-I-Z-A-R, right? Yeah, I Z A R Academy. Academy. Correct. And and if they want to I I know you have a book on Amazon as well, right? Yeah, yep, yep. So I literally like everything I do I try to master and I kind of master I I master my relationship and I master people skills and how to deal with people and just from reading books and studying the actual individual I realize that a lot of people that's in my generation, you know, from the ages from like 18 to like 35, like they only in a relationship for six months to like two years. That's like max. And I've been in my relationship over 11 years. And I realized that it's not a lot of people who are in successful relationships. So I created a book called Spectacular Love, How to Make Good Love Last. And I basically speak from my point of view and my fiance speak from her point of view on how we went through what we went through and how we got to where we at now. So I feel like there's certain things that might work that we did that will work for another individual. And coming from a female point of view and a guy point of view, you could kind of get it from, you know, both point of views on helping your relationship because in business, in business, everything goes together. You need to have a, a healthy relationship. You need to, to, in order to have a healthy business because you can't be striving in business and thinking that, you're going to go home and have this headache at home. No, all that stuff go hand in hand because if you're not, if you're not mentally prepared to go home and like deal with your spouse, then that's going to bleed into your business. So you have to get your personal relationship together to be at your full potential in business. I couldn't have said it better. And if they want to follow you on, on social media, where should they go? So you can go to I am spectacular.com. Um, and it affords you to everything or matter of fact, Scratch that. Everything is I am spectacular. So if you go to Instagram, it's I am spectacular. Facebook, I am spectacular. The only thing that's different is my LinkedIn. My LinkedIn is just spectacular Smith. Mm, got it. Got it. And I'll make sure I put a link on the on the on the notes in the show page so everybody can just click and, and go there as well. Perfect. Perfect. So if you 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 heard it for yourself, if you wanted all the information to my program, my social channel, my website. You know, you guys could just click on my podcast too, uh, the spectacular experience. So hey, you guys hey. want to subscribe to that too. Hey, Spec, it's been it's been awesome. It's awesome to connect, and it's been spectacular. Thank you, man. Thank you. When I come to my tour, comes over there, man. We we should come over there. Definitely want you to come to the show, man. I appreciate it for sure. I'll bring my wife along if if it's possible. Hey, let's do it. Definitely, it's all love.